the state of the power where we talk matters of state and issues that are going around in the media where well, this is city television the only channel that is close to you my name is Heston Munanua the revolutionary journalist I pick into a book called tough times never last but tough people do it was written by a, uh, an author called Robert D. Schooler who brought out that it is humanity through its resilience that can overcome tough times. This brings us to the current political situation in the country right now. We are looking at a lot of events that are having a lot of political connotations and have impacted even on the economic side and even the social attitudes towards our politics. We look at the closure of Makerere, which was a little bit so uh, so disheartening. We look at the inflation which is single digits, though some people are saying that it is running into double digit. Opposition politicians are being arrested day and night, which uh, people are saying this is uh, an infringement on their fundamental human right of movement and assembly. Well, to discuss all this, this is what we call the state of, an, state of the nation analysis. To discuss this topic with me tonight, I'm having Forum for Democratic Change Deputy Secretary General, Honorable Harold Kaija, a uh, person who has been behind and um, behind the defiance campaign. I'll later ask him about what the defiance campaign is all about. And I'm having activist for change, uh, political pundit, and chief executive officer of Hazard Media Limited. Come 2026, he wants to stand as member of parliament, Mr. Mayambala Joseph. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll begin with you, um, I mean, tell, tell the viewers, what is your say on this kind of situation, both politically, economically, and socially? What is your pick? Is, someone told me earlier that we are actually in for a black spring here in Uganda because everything seems to be tense Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, the situation in this country has deteriorated to a level of no return. If it is a, an air ticket, it's a no return journey. If you're going to the US, you're not coming back. Uh, it's only that uh, the level of uh, ignorance in this country are too high with the depreciation of the events in the country. It's too low that many people don't know what happens and others associate them with other omens or other psychological kind of understanding that could be that we are bewitched. You see people running to witch doctors, you've seen them go to pastors, sheikhs, to be prayed for. In a country where unemployment levels are 83%. Actually get applying for a job and get it. It's like a miracle by Jesus Christ. In a country where they tell you 54% of the drugs are fake or have expired on the shelves of public hospital. Living is not easy. This, this is my question. This is what we call a Chisanja upon Amchezo on the other side of the divide, which is for national resistance movement. And what do you mean and by Akuna Amchezo? That he that is cracking a whip, yeah, yeah. that in seven he is cracking a whip on those people that are siphoning. That is your interpretation. The, yes. I can say Akuna Amchezo. This time around I'm not going to play. If I'm stealing 10,000, I'm going to steal a billion. If contracts have been allowing others to come and engage in, I'm going to close. If there was a little inclusion in the decision making, I'm going to close. So when people hear Akuna Muchezo, and the only thing that he, the toughness, you know, you look at after the Akuna Muchezo, what do you see? You see bank closing, universities demonstrating, you see police asking from the, from the public that has already paid them through taxes that also contribute. You see, people die of heart attacks, everybody dying of heart attacks. 
it's becoming an active VIP. Uh, actually, even some societies that uh, people are committed. Of course, I'm, 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 I'm many. Eh? Yeah. You but see, an, an economy that is really sinking. If you went through the streets of Kampala, you will find that where you will see shops that will have to go for goodwill. It is easy to get to get to, to get to get to get. To get is to this is this this is the uh, the one question before I go to my counter? Is it the problem of the politician or the political system in place? Because the, the, the politicians may have the political will to change the situation, no, the problem but maybe the system could be so dysfunctional no, the, that they are, cannot. The be. problem is bad governance and the collapse of system. The only system that is actually leaving the system called in some seven. That's the only system that you can survive. Only yesterday he was telling us that even ministers are defying. You find a, a ministry that has four, around four ministers, that's a ministry of education, and there's a crisis in the education sector, and it shall not come up with anything. And you want to find out the CEO. Who is in charge to come and what? Take the And this is what I'm talking about Makere. If Makere was supposed to close, it should have uh, been a resolution of council. But before council would make the decision, a man came, came up and uh, closed it. You look around all the public universities, all the public universities have issues. Those, those are who have not demonstrated, who are not closed, are about to be closed. Those are not demonstrated, are about to demonstrate. So it is actually going that way. In a country where you have a, you have a, a sector whereby they tell you you have a university of science and technology, and there has never been any kind of research in Russian technology. Hold, on, hold, hold, on, hold, on, hold on to your point. Uh, this is where I bring you, uh, Mayamba and Joseph. You're an independent, uh, maybe political, and so you're leaning towards the forum for democratic change. But this is the question I put to you. Do you think if FDC, or any other opposition political party right now comes into power, do you think this can change overnight or it will have to be built systematically the way NRM came into power in 1986 and produced and promised the fundamental change? Uh, look at story. There are certain things that can be changed in a second and there are certain things that take time. But I like our view outside there to know things. Who is causing what we are seeing right now? Believe me or not, Uganda or Africa's major problem is leadership because the inflation you are seeing is not supposed to be fixed by a person who is outside there. Primarily supposed to be fixed by the leaders. You know one problem we have in Uganda is that they leave people with greater skills, people who are knowledgeable, and they take people who will dance on their tunes, people who act unprofessionally, people who work contrary to what is supposed to be done. So, so, so what should the, if the opposition comes, what would it bankroll to bring the situation back to an average sanity? I would advise if the opposition is to get power, one of the things they need to look at is to appoint the right people in the right positions. That's one problem we are facing in Uganda. In Uganda is where you find the Minister of Education who does not even have a senior first certificate. You will have to prove that. Of course, I have no problem with that. Uh, I would like to put a disclaimer. Reason. The views that are expressed on this show are not views of city television or its. These are opinions, personal opinions. In Uganda, Uganda is a nation where you find a governor of Bank of Uganda who cannot sit for 10 minutes without those. But I would like us to ask ourselves one question. Are the people in leadership that we need? Really do they possess the skills we need as a country? Or people that really know the skills are undermined and they appoint people based on personal interests? Because believe me or not, like my colleague has said, all systems corrupt. The only system that is still standing is the 70 system, which is soon also corrupting if it does not work out. Uh, I'll come back to you, Honorable. Statistics show that the national resistance movement has presided over a growing gross domestic product. Uh, in 1986, we were collecting around two point, uh, the, the, the domestic in domestic taxes, we were collecting around 2.9 billion. Come in the late 1990s, we grew to 286 billion. Then, right now, we are almost in 11.3 trillion. But, I mean, why do you, with such a growing exponential gross domestic product, 
and inter internal domestic taxes. Where is the problem that? Because yes, NRM could have, but remember you're also a political party that, that wants power. How are you going to harness this? This, uh, this potential in revenue, this potential in the, con in, in the economics to change the kind of uh, situation. Yeah. Of course, you look at the priorities. We've talked about how the previous governments were collecting taxes vis a vis what these ones are, the, the, these, these junta's collecting taxes. <laughs> so when the vampires came, vampires only eat. They collect and do what? And eat. With the little taxes that the previous governments were collecting, there's something to show. We had schools, yellow schools, that even to this year We had hospitals, we had roads whose life expectancy was, was long. I understand in Mlago, if you went in Mlago at the time then, you'd find medicine, and even when you are you're a patient, there was a menu. They would provide you food. Students would be, pro would be provided, like at university, with a boom. Money for those who are poor, those who are for those on government scholarships, money for upkeep. They would even be given money to buy books. But the difference then, the, po the population pressure. No, yeah, you know what you're saying? Yes. Population vis a vis income. I think as the population is increasing, even the income has got, incomes have increased. But what do they use with the money? They tell you of how much they collect. They never tell you of how, how they spend it. So now the problem is how you spend it. To deal with the Maputo declaration that actually requires to have an input of 10% of the budget in a voucher, Uganda puts in slightly above 3%. When actually we all agree that the majority of Ugandans depend on our culture. So it is okay, it would be prudent, and the same government would think about, about putting more money in those sectors, that, that sector that actually employs more Ugandans. Look at Ginger Road, it is our exit route to other countries. We look at the bulk of, of, of volume of goods coming in, you look at the traders, you find they are heavy when they are coming in. But when they are going out, when they would actually have collected all that we ask our producers, take them and get more dollars. You find you hear, it shows you that they are empty. And look at how much money we spend in China, vis-a-vis -vis the money we earn from China. We earn around 30, 30 million dollars. We send their billions. So it shows you that eh, there is no will eh, that the government that is in charge is the government of thugs. But they are only stupid that they can even tell us how much they have collected. But they, not, they cannot tell you Ghana eh, from the collection that they've given us. Eh? How are the schools? Since they came, this government came into power, there is no school that they are in place that you can compare. You see, at the time when Dr. Gote was president, Uganda had 26 <laughs> districts. He consulted in each a good school, 26 schools. Consulted 20 hospitals, 26 hospitals in each. Yeah, at the time, I am told schools here, parents were able, would be able to pay for a whole year in terms of school fees. Today, even parents cannot afford for a term. That tells how things are what? Things are hard. Then, eh, you would look at the point of education. The point of, of uh, they used to have it P6, junior and junior too. Well, after P6, somebody would go and say to become a primary teacher and they would teach. Today, even though that have finished senior six, when they go to teach in the primary, you see, there's something lacking. So the, the quality of these people and native kind of uh, comparison eh, is far lacking. Eh? You have too much and have nothing. So it's after the, there's a white man who came and was asking, give your comment about Uganda. He went and visited there with a job around the country. He said, this is the country that has too much but has nothing. He tells you that you have the potential. Like you go and uh, you go in a gym to go and get flex air, but then we ask you why you got a body build. Okay. Nothing to show. In the next in the next ten minutes, uh, let's let's shift this debate to the financing campaign. Um, I'm yet to understand what 
is FDC or maybe uh, Dr. Kano Chiza Mesite defined, you're going to come in later. Um, what, are you defying the results of February 18th or you defying an ideological, you need an ideological orientation? What is, uh, is the dichotomy, the, you draw a dichotomy between office uh, seeking and maybe ideological orientation in terms of our policy? Uh, no, we, uh, our defense is about putting the ownership of this country to where it belongs. Is that crime the co spirit? No, the, co the, the constitution of Uganda says power belongs. You understand? But do the people of Uganda have power? Is there will, as in, we say in our Lord's Prayer, is there will granted? Because what is the will of the majority? The will of the majority is to have good jobs, and not just jobs, good paying jobs, a good healthcare system, good laws, good schools, good roads, security, and everything that actually makes you to be proud as a Uganda. Our defense campaign is about saying no to all of those policies that are hurt people, to all of those actions that hurt people. That's all about. It's all about that giving Uganda an identity. Today, the people of Uganda, we are following up events happening in America. But how many people follow events happening in Uganda? The reason why that happens is that we benefit a lot in America. That's why we would want to know what happens there. And not for the benefits from what happens in Uganda. That is why that whatever happens in Uganda, it used to be no man is business. Okay, okay, hold on to your point. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayamata, come in. What is your take on that? Uh, before I talk about the fires, I want to make a submission about the education system in our country. Okay. You know, if a, if a nation is to be to, to develop, the education system matters so much. What do our children study while at school? We have a system that nurtures more job seekers than job creators. We have a system that is a hundred percent theoretical. That is, it does not usually focus on identifying a person with ability and developing it. And one, one of the things that I see is that all the people I see in the Ministry of Education appear to be people who usually travel to various countries to do research, but I wonder why do they fail to copy what is right for their nations? That's one of the problems I have with the systems we have in Uganda. Going on defiance, have you I seen this and I say it again and again that freedom comes to those who fight? Not to those say it into the freedom comes to those who fight, not to those who cry. Right now, today we are looking at the United States of America as an example. But remember our time, the United States of America was going through what we call the American War of Independence. France had what we call the French Revolution. Austria had Mad people like Chris Metanich, but we want to, be, to revolt against them. I'll say this if leaders turn into misleaders, defiance will continue and uh, personalize support it 100%. Because dictators go by pressure, change is voting by pressure. We will not achieve what we want if we just stop because we've talked for over 30 years. They will fail to understand. Uganda is not a poor country, Uganda is a rich country. I was last week embarrassed when I saw the president launching fresh water on the bicycle when our neighbors in Kenya who do not have fresh water. Some of whom who live in deserts are feeding on Lake Victoria's water, doing what we call irrigation. Look at Egypt. Egypt is a desert country, but it replaces the water go from the river Nile. And they have one of the biggest irrigation schemes, I think, in Africa. But here in Uganda, where somebody Stubbornly stands up and claims that we are uh, agriculture, the carbon of this economy cannot finance irrigation. That's one of the things that hurt me. That's why I personally say I support the final because our leaders work by pressure. Okay, in the last five minutes, uh, I need both of you to give me a take on the US election 
and then later on you will give your parting shots. Uh, I'll begin with you. You have been uh, you have been following uh, the U.S. I mean, U.S. elections from the primaries uh, now to. I mean, did you really expect uh, Donald Trump to win because polls have been against him? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that I didn't support him. Here are a supporter. Yes. But what I can tell you is that uh, in the US, elections are about the interests of America. You understand? America has a vision that you only plan to contest and lead them in line or in plan to achieve that vision. That is one thing. America. That's why you say in uh, in the couple supporting the slogan was stronger together. The other couple was saying make America great. Are they different? They're not different. It's about the greatness of America because they know the more America is great, the more an American benefit. That's why an America, wherever he goes, has respect. Whatever. Even if you say, young woman, they tell that boy who is five years American, even the president of that country was going to respect that person. Why? Their country is what? It's great. So they benefit from that. So it tells you of those interests. I love the campaigns, especially when our President Obama was campaigning for our candidate, telling people why they vote. That on, those, on that ballot paper, you're going to take. You're going to see good education. On that bad paper, you're going to tick. You're going to tick a strong economy. On that bad paper, you're going to tick. You are ticking to have a uh, strong paying jobs, uh, good health care. So all that that you feel must change. Your post elections are about it. What happens after the election? So it's about securing the future. It's not about fun fair. Oh, I say I'm electing my brother, I'm electing my cousin, the guy who grew up. Uh -uh. It's about securing a future. How do I want my future to be? So, that is what you see. Then you see how they make sure that it's a transparent system. That you follow events as they start and as they go. Then you see that what we call free will. You decide to support whoever you want. You decide to campaign the way you want what? to campaign. That kind of freeness gives openness and creativity in among the, among the people of the country. You saw how the media was too free. A media person will say, I support so and so, which is right. But you find in other in the other countries, they cannot talk. Eh? Others are not even allowed to campaign. Others are closed. Others are something over there do, do not do not you know. Because you would see in a media house that does not support a given candidate. You would find they actually cover the, the candidate. <laughs> but here in, 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 a, in a campaign, UBC, uh, Vision Group, will only cover one candidate. So, uh, so in that way, it shows you how their civilization has moved. Because the question of civilization, how you choose your leaders, why you choose them. And there's another bit is that uh, what people don't realize that countries that have actually devolved. The people who take these matters of uh, politics too much are about 20%. The rest follow the 20%. Why? They have strong systems that even when you come to power, you cannot break them. You only try to polish them and live into the, into the, into the boundaries. The moment you run to break, their system breaks you. But here the thing of, uh, you know, uh, we have a system called Mr. Seven. They tell you that if he leaves Uganda, what will end? Eh? You saw how it happened in Libya. You see what is happening in Egypt, whereby there is a man who actually becomes the system. But that side, you know. Now we know. Uh, a few weeks ago, we saw Obama and Michelle organizing their last what? Their last dinner. We know when they are going. Eh? Actually, uh, Deborah Malak, the ambassador of uh, US ambassador in Uganda, was saying. They wrote on, the, on their tweet, say, let us show you how we elect and how we have uh, 
free and peaceful transitions. You know, I think that message was for Uganda. It was not for Uganda. For us, we don't know when we shall have it because we never had it. Where one president says, hey, man, how are you? Thank you for coming to office. Let me show you over to the office, and I'm doing what? And I'm going and stay there. So it is what, those are things, the, the values of the system that for us we get it. And we want, we actually fight to see that at one time in Africa people should be looking at Uganda, saying, ah, I wish we had it. An actual system like Uganda. I wish we had systems like those of Uganda. I wish we had people that vote issues and have leaders that are actually in the interest of their people and the people and the, and the kind of because you see, we have, uh, you know, of course you talked about statistics. Yeah, you, you, that, that last you, thing, you, yeah. the statistics of uh, inflation and then growth. You see, there is what we call economic growth and economic development. So economic growth is super uh, speculative. Just wind up. Yeah, winding up. Yeah. Economic development, you feel it. If you are saying the economy is growing, you must feel it in your wallet. An economy that grows talks about the jobs. Because in the serious economics, every month they give you statistics. The economy has created these jobs. This has changed. So even if people see they are growing with it, but we have an economy that only grows with the political elite. You hear them are very happy of uh, how, you know, make, get, getting too much big salaries eh? for us, you know, MPs should get this. Uh, so everything is for those who should be created for the lead. But those that, that are the bosses, who the haves actually gain more than they don't have. Uh, okay. Um, your parting shots and your take on uh, the American election. Uh, of course, uh, I expect the two of us now to happen. Because I, I predicted that Trump win, I think I, I, usually, I usually tell you. Yeah. But I thought he could not win the popular vote. I had expected him to win uh, the electoral vote because Florida was still a swing state. There was Pennsylvania. There are many states that were seen. Though it caught me by surprise when I saw him winning both the electoral college and uh, the popular vote. But what does that teach? Or what does that teach our nation? Is that we should build systems that do not rely on individuals. We should build systems that it is individualized. You learn individualized politics versus institutional politics. Because yeah, US has what you call strong institutions. Because believe me or not, Donald Trump has been seeing a lot in these campaigns. But just watch his transition. He will be told this is possible. This is not possible for the goodness of the United States of America is abandon it and do this and this and this. But uh, in Africa is where we have states that deal on individuals. In fact, you know, reach on our next extent of calling somebody father of the nation. Have you ever seen it in the US or in Britain? So I think one of the things I would call upon on our African people to learn about is that institutional politics versus individual politics. Well, that was the state of the park. My name is Heston Munamura, the revolutionary journalist. Uh, my take on this is uh, everything that is happening in our country, it is the politicians and you people that make a nation great. Well, that was the state of the park. My name is Heston Munamura, the revolutionary journalist. We have been at the Forum for Democratic uh, Change party offices here in Kampala, this time you weren't, in the studios. Please have a lovely week. <laughs>